Welcome back to a Windows Wednesday where we talk about fun things going on in the Windows world that might convince you to say, hey, I'm just sick of this nonsense. And we will, of course, talk about some of these solutions, uh, mostly looking at Linux wherever you can use it, looking at alternatives to Office software suites, because the reality is most people can get away with the alternatives perfectly fine, and they're not going to do things like, I don't know, randomly delete your files. Let's go ahead and talk about this issue, and then the e-waste generation issue on this edition. Thanks for checking out this video by Switch to Linux, where we talk about why we should switch to Linux and some other things considered in the FOSS software world. Well, today we did want to talk about two unrelated articles, and I just wasn't sure if I want to do one or the other. So I said, you know what, let's just go ahead and talk about both because they're both really good articles. They both came out in the last couple of days. And uh, the first one, of course, we're going to talk about Microsoft Word is deleting documents instead of saving them. Whoops, S something got lost in the QA team. Now, to be sure, I think this is partially due to our world, which is progressively going into this cloud-based world, whereby we are assuming everything is based on the clouds. In fact, when I worked on one of my books, called Happy Holidays. I worked on this with a co-author who was just finishing up high school at the time, and he was providing some thoughts and some essays, and we had some personal perspectives of what various holidays meant uh, in, in the book. And we're working at the donut shop, and I give him one of the computers to work on. He's typing away, and I'm typing away on another computer. And uh, he, he finishes this up, and he's like, I just said, did you save the file? He's like, what do you mean save the file? Like, save the file you know you see he's grown up in this cloud-based world whereby we just see everything as perpetually being on the cloud automatically saved you can access your files just by logging into an account we don't have this idea of having computer files and this is one of the things i think that is hurting our world as we are considering going offline. We see it as an inconvenience that, oh man, I, I, on, I only have this file here, not over there. Even though most people don't have more like, you know, a computer or maybe a desktop and maybe a laptop, you don't really have as, you don't have like 10 computers like I do where you got files all over the place, you know. But the reality is we live in this world that is so focused on cloud-based technology. Now, this is not an issue just on cloud-based technology. However, I actually think that based on what's going on here and Microsoft's push to get everything into the cloud might actually be the root of where this bug was introduced. This is the Microsoft word for um, Office 365 or Microsoft 365. This is the latest update version 2409 build 18025.20104. And what this update is doing here is when you are prompted to save a document in response to closing the document, then if you try and save it there under certain circumstances, the file will be deleted instead of being saved. Now, this is not entirely based on the modern cloud technology because this has been a feature of Microsoft Office since, you know, at least before Office 95. You're working on a document, you hit the X button, and it says, uh, would you like to save this thing? That's nothing new. However, I imagine that it's getting worse because our world assumes everything is saved because more often than not, people are working on cloud documents that are perpetually saved rather than offline documents. Now, I think that this bug was probably introduced because Microsoft is trying to force everything into the cloud. And this is the Office 365 version of Word, which is that cloud-centric first. So I believe that the file, the program is looking for the file in the cloud, and if it was worked on as only a local file, it tries to save it to the cloud, but there's no place to save it to the cloud, and so it deletes the file altogether. I think it, that's probably what's going on, so we'll have to see what happens. Now, it does have to uh, deal with a very specific set of circumstances according to the system. They say if you're typing the document, you close out of the application, you're prompted to save, you save it, and your file name has a hash, cat, uh, hash in it or 
a capitalized file extension, then it will delete the, the file. So if you are using this version of Microsoft Word and you hit that close and ask you to save, there should be three options. There were last I knew. I haven't used it in a while, but there should be three options. You should see a yes, a no, and a cancel. What you should do is hit the cancel button. That What that does is that cancels your close. Save the file manually, which seems to not trigger the deletion. Save the file manually and then go to close the application. That way your file should possibly be saved. And uh, that seems to be what the biggest workaround is. If that is too much, of course, they do say one of the best things you can do is roll back to the last known version that doesn't do this, which is 17928.20156. And this article there does have the the um, command line code to hit um, through the command prompt on Microsoft in order to do this. Of course, these are the types of bugs that are becoming more common with Microsoft applications. Last month, they fixed one involving all these Office 365 apps, Outlook, Word, Excel, OneNote, which caused these to crash when either typing text or doing spell checking. So we are getting random updates that prevent you from being able to do core functions of the software itself. This is why I prefer to use offline applications. Particularly, I recommend using LibreOffice, which is a full, complete suite of Office software. It's completely cross-compatible with all of your different systems, whether you're using um, Microsoft or Linux or Mac, you can do that. They do have an online cloud-based system as well. So this is definitely the one I would recommend. And it's going to do everything you can do under Word outside of the top 1% of weird applications. So people are like, well, I have to use Word. Not necessarily. I have followers on my channel that have actually said, no, I don't use Word. They tell us we have to use Word. I use LibreOffice. And that's what he does and nobody knows the difference it's very simple though you just got to save things in the docx file format and make sure you have the fonts on your computer which people are going to be expecting if you have windows and outside of doing the top one percent of weird and niche things your system is going to work just fine under this application rather than office which of course are trying to push everybody to the regular subscription model whereas LibreOffice is free and open source software you can go ahead and use it and if you really want to pay for your software they will definitely take donations and i would recommend that so uh, this is of course what microsoft is doing they are accidentally deleting files and i have a sneaky suspicion this is because they're trying to be this cloud first approach that's probably what the root of this happens to be so just be aware of that if you are using this software application and i would encourage you Install LibreOffice and play around with it and see if it can't do what you need it to do because I think it's a far more powerful application anyway, in all honesty. So with that, let's go ahead and change gears to our second one. Microsoft is trying to generate more e-waste again. Of course, they say that they care about the climate and the environment, but they're trying to uh, clamp down on their requirement restrictions for Windows 11 again. Of course, they released Windows 11 and had these requirements of having a TPM 2.0 module, a modern CPU, secure boot, things like this. And a lot of people are like, I don't have that. And I don't know if you've checked the economy lately. I just can't go out to the store and just simply pick up a brand new computer. Okay, I can't do that. You know, to ask people you need a new computer just to get the latest upgrade is ridiculous. Now, I understand if you're using a 15-year-old computer, completely understand a lot of these computers from only three or four years ago will still not run windows 11 properly and that is where the challenge is now there have been ways to get it to run of course people have talked about it and there have been ways around it but they're trying to block more of these ways one of the ways that you were able to run it is running rufus uh, to create the startup disk for uh, Windows using the Rufus software, it would remove the file which 
uh, checked all of these requirements and blocked you from installing Windows. So Rufus would get around it. However, that particular change was actually recently patched by Microsoft, forcing more people to buy new hardware when they want to get the latest update to Windows, the um, 24H2. So with that, uh, that, is, uh, that is no longer the option. However, uh, Rufus developer Pete Bard published some instructions on GitHub, of course, being a Microsoft uh, product. I wonder how long this is going to be up there. But if you want to... If you want to do an in-place upgrade to Windows 11 24H2, they got rid of a number of the ways, but he actually has the way to do it. And he basically says that for in-place upgrades, we need to run an elevated command prompt and then do some changes inside of the registry. And uh, he says that he they will be patching a future version of Rufus to do just this. So if you see a update to Rufus come through, then it probably is going to patch this particular issue. So good job for Rufus for keeping e-waste out of our uh, landfills as Microsoft tries to get people in the down economy to purchase a new computer when their computer works perfectly fine. Once again, I prefer people switching over to Linux where you possibly can. I'm not saying absolutely everybody can switch to Linux. There are definitely people that have circumstances that they just can't. But don't make excuses and say, well, I just can't because you just don't know. You don't want to do that. I encourage people to play around with Linux Download an ISO, use Rufus to put that ISO onto a USB drive and boot into that USB drive and just see what it can do. I'm not saying to install Linux onto your Windows system and wipe out your Windows computer. I like the slow roll approach. When I was switching over to Linux, I maintained my old Windows 7 computer with all that software for a number of years while I played with all of the different alternatives that I would need to do on Linux before I made the actual switch. And then the first computer I switched to fully for my web design was a Raspberry Pi running Manjaro. All right. And so you don't have to completely drop your Windows system. You also, though, don't have to go out and buy a brand new computer. You can buy yourself a little external hard drive or even flash drives. You can install Linux on that or you can just use the live ISOs. You can see what the power of the operating system is. And uh, if you want to, you can pick up a new computer and use their old one to explore Linux get better at it, and then eventually, hopefully, make the entire switch into the world of free and open source software. We're not worried about updates telling you you have to buy a new computer or, hey, maybe updates deleting your documents. So there is a good compelling reason to try out Linux, if not the total uh, the total change, then if nothing else, then you might look at it to say, hey, we're going to do this change to have more options in the future. More options is always the way to go. So there is our thoughts for today. Let me know your thoughts down below if you like these articles in the style of video. Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.